today's topic is how to feel good every day with Tanya Van Pelt. But I'm not, I didn't really understand how food impacted how I felt. And I thought, like most women, probably thought I should be thin, that that's the most attractive way to be as a woman, which is really boring. But I, uh, so I, I would try and eat things that are low fat, but then I would also just eat whatever. And I never put together that, oh, maybe my bloated tummy and these headaches I would get or these allergies and sinus attacks are related to what I'm eating and also how I'm living. Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. As always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. Today's topic is how to feel good every day with Tanya Van Pelt. And hopefully by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to try a different approach to nutrition, understand your body's reaction to certain foods, and try some new recipes. My guest today is Tanya Van Pelt, writer, producer, and an expert on diet-related wellness. She's the author of The Ageless Diet, Your Fountain of Youth, and the related agelessdietlife.com. She empowers people to chart a course through the health and wellness noise and reimagine a life full of nourishment, sustainable vitality, and fun. In this episode, Tanya and I talk about three things that create inflammation, how to rebuild your gut health, and five lifestyle changes so you can feel good every day. The free giveaway today is the eight-day meal plan, and you can get it at wellwomanlife.com slash 089 show. I really like this giveaway because it gives you eight whole days of ideas for meals all planned out that you can try right away to start feeling healthier. You can also join the conversation in the Well Woman Life community group at wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook. And I wanted to let you all know that you have the opportunity to join the Well Woman Life community um, membership, and you just go to wellwomanlife.com slash membership, and you can sign up there. You get weekly goodies and monthly deep dive workshops. And um, it's a lot of fun and you get to share your successes and challenges living the well woman life with other women. Now to my interview with Tanya Van Pelt. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's a delight to be here. Yes, I'm excited to talk to you uh, because I have um, I heard a lot about you through um, someone I met that, that we, we were just talking before the interview started. Um, and it was just one of those like, oh, you have to talk to my friend Tanya. So here we are. And um, I'm excited to learn more about you and what you're offering for women uh, specifically. But um, let's start, Tanya, with I just want to sort of take a step back and um, ask you who you are in the world. Like who who is Tanya right now in the world? 
Wow, that's a um, possibly deep question. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll try to be brief. Who is Tanya? Um, right now, I would I kind of identify based on what I do, which is, I guess, a very American trait. Um, you know, when you go to a party, who are you? And you say, well, I'm a writer. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, I feel that I am a person who is on a quest to heal the planet. And the best way I know how to do that is to get people to feel better. Because I believe if you feel better on a cellular level, you treat yourself, others and the world better. Mm. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. It took me a long time to get there. Um, I had to heal myself and then um, use what I've learned to help others do the same. And I've seen the results and the results seem feel magical. And that's really inspired me to continue on. Oh, okay. So I definitely want to dig into that, but let's also go back and um, you're right. It is, it, it is interesting that we always answer the question uh, around what we do, you know, and, and I, I always like to sort of, learn about people in terms of who they are in relationship with other people as well and and just what else they do in the world so or who else they are in the world um so are you um can you talk a little bit more about yourself uh, apart from your work (laughs) sure Mm -hmm. it's interesting um i was in france uh uh, in june and i was at a uh a party for an artist. And, um, I realized that no one in France leads with what they do. Mm -hmm. And I lived in New York for a long time and that's the first thing we say. So, um, it's going to be a little tricky for me to think about that, but I would say that, um, who I am in really in the way based on the way I relate to other people, um, is, is evolving. I'm, alone a lot of the time because I'm a writer and my daily dose of society usually comes from say a fitness class, like a bar class. And even then it's just a, hello, how are you? So I'm evolving because I've become a bit of an activist since the election. And I've lucked into this group of really strong, um, really cool women And that's led to this opening up of uh, my heart where I'm learning that the only way forward in terms of like contentment in life and happiness is through relationships with other people. Mm. And that's been, um, that's been really the silver lining for me post uh, election that, that, that there are people out there who want to do wonderful things and they're engaged and engaging and they're bringing me out more of my kind of uh, self-involved shell. Mm. Yeah. That, that, and, uh, my relationship with the natural world is also deepening. I'm really discovering that the best way for me to feel better is to get out. And, um, even if it's just in the backyard to look at the bees, hovering around the chives to notice these small moments, which make me present, which is a real struggle for me to be present. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's, that's great. I think you answered it. The question. <laughs> okay. But I wasn't sure I did ramble. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's good. Um, so I want to go back to, you said you had to heal yourself before you could take on this role that you have now of healing others through, um, helping them feel better. What describe that time in your life when you needed to heal and, and what was going on for you and what did you do? Well, I, I've always been a good eater. I've always liked food and, but I'm not, I didn't really understand how food impacted how I felt. And I thought, like most women, probably thought I should be thin, that that's the most attractive way to be as a woman, which is really boring. But I, uh, so I, I would try and eat things that are low fat, but then I would also just eat whatever. And I never put together that, oh, maybe my bloated tummy and these headaches I would get or these allergies and sinus attacks are related to what I'm eating and also how I'm living. 
um, not sleeping enough, um, not moving my body enough, not, I I mean, a meditation practice. Are you joking? (laughs) I didn't even know what meditation was, let alone how to sit still and focus or even breathing. Um, so, and I had this gut issues, like I think almost every other person in America where I wasn't sure if I went out to dinner and I ate a certain thing, how I was going to react. And that's yeah. kind of, that's weird when you think about it, that, that we're not aware of how we're going to digest something when our bodies are perfectly designed, unless you have a, a, you know, unless you're one of those rare people that have a gastrointestinal disease or a severe allergy, most of us are designed to digest food beautifully. Mm-hmm. So it's, and I have to say, if you're not digesting things well, or at least for me, which for decades I wasn't, you're miserable. I mean, it's really hard to feel good when, you know, when you've got the belly of a eight month pregnant woman with twins. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what, ha- what did you do? What did I do? Um, well, first of all, I did a lot of research and I talked to, uh, doctors and nutritionists and naturopaths and, I realized that there are just like three things that really inflame people and, and it's really inflammation that makes us feel so bad that makes our gut royal and, and, and get puffy and big and bloated and we're not able to go to the bathroom and it's what causes headaches and most chronic lifestyle disease diseases, um, all come from inflammation. And for me, the three things that inflame me are usually the three things that inflame most people. And that would be, um, dairy, conventional dairy, uh, conventional wheat, not like your heirloom wheats, like icorn. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Or, but your, um, yeah, your, the wheat that is found in like crackers and stuff that you just get at your local grocery store. And then also all added sugars and sugar substitutes, Um, they just do a number on us. And once I realized that and I cut them out and, but I, again, I'm a big eater, so I still need a, you know, a lot of food that has a lot of flavor and fat and all of that. Um, I started to feel better, but I really didn't get better until I took, um, did the supplement program recommended by a couple of naturopaths I know. And I hooked up with a supplement company that makes the best. And I tried that and I was able to rebuild my, my gut health, my microbiome. And that's when I realized, Oh, wow. When I eat, I just feel energized. I just feel good. And then of course I also had to do the accompanying lifestyle things, which I know I'm sure you are doing, you know, the, the, um, the better ways to manage the stressors that are inevitable in life, which would be a 12 minute meditation practice, moving your body through space daily, sleeping more, all of that. I had to also adopt Mm. and not be such a sedentary person. Yeah. And so after you rebuilt your gut health, did you continue to eat dairy, wheat and sugars, or did you leave those out? Mm still i i left them out yeah um okay i um i i learned that i have a more severe uh reaction to lactose than some people you know and um i can do like goats or sheep's milk because it seems to be closer to the makeup of human breast milk than um cow's milk uh, so I do have that on occasion, you know, I like feta, I like a uh, yogurt sometimes. Um, and then when it came to sugar, I mean, every now and again, I do splurge on a grocery store sheet cake, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is my weakness. And I'm, I happen to be a really good baker. I put myself through acting school, uh, when I was in my early twenties through baking, um, desserts. Wow. So every now and again, I do bake a pecan pie or peach pie, or I make a hummingbird cake. But for the most part, um, I don't eat any sugar. Also, because I have a massive sweet tooth, and I find like most people, sugar is addictive. Once I start, 
Yeah. There's no cutoff. You know, my husband gave up sugar uh, a few years ago and it's really difficult to not eat sugar. It's yeah, because it's in everything. That is so true. And that's why I think the easiest way, even if you want to still eat sugar and dairy and all of this, the easiest way to get back to optimal health is to embrace cooking, which is surprisingly hard for most people. And the thing is, is that if you can read, you can cook. You could follow a recipe. Yeah. Most of the recipes on my site are uh, all make really delicious food, but they're all pretty simple. Black beans and rice, uh, guacamole, five ingredients, um, edamame hummus, also really easy and all really delicious. And I, I think that that's really the best way to get back to real food is to cook your own because we live in a time where everything has lots of junk added to it. Yeah. So I want to just respond to what you've put out here because this is really resonating with me because I have had a, uh, like a neck problem for years and years and years. And about three years ago, I did a cleanse, uh, where I omitted gluten and dairy and sugar and all everything basically. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I, I was just basically eating like vegetables and lentils and rice. And, um, after doing it for several weeks, I just felt amazingly better. And I think it was like a a 12 week deal. I think we had to do it for 12 weeks. And, and at the end of it, um, I just, I didn't want to eat dairy and wheat and sugar and things. It, It, my body was so used to um, feeling good without those things. And I didn't have allergies anymore. The Mm -hmm. the neck problem completely went away. It was, that's interesting. It was really amazing. Yeah. It was, it was just incredible. So I continued to do that. Um, but I want, I want to hear more about what you ended up developing because I know you developed a whole thing around these, these discoveries that you made for yourself. Well, I knew as someone again, who likes to eat and, um, is what we call in the South good eater. Uh, I knew that I didn't want to do this kind of, um, you know, crazy detox cleanse cycle, basically what I consider society sanctioned eating disorders. I knew I wanted real hearty food and I wanted a lifestyle that fit within my current life. I didn't, I'm not, you know, I wasn't rich. I didn't have the luxury to not work (laughs) and I didn't have the time to like a, like a Hollywood celebrity to work out, you know, two to three hours a day, um, or take a holiday anytime I felt stressed. So, and I knew that my, the stress in my life wasn't going to go away. And I knew that I didn't want to age like my, my aunts and uncles or my grandparents age, you know, where, where by the time they hit 45, if you look at photos of them, they look, (laughs) they looked like, um, dowdy older people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't want to, I mean, I didn't have the money, but I didn't want to like go have plastic surgery to look like a, a version of myself when I was 20. So I, so I thought, I'm sure there are other people that feel this way, that they have a, some resources that they want to allocate to their well being, and they, they don't want to age conventionally and they want to feel better. They, they don't want to feel puffy and bloated and cranky and depressed and swollen and have achy joints. You know, they want to feel good almost every day. Um, so that's where the ageless diet program came about. And in fact, when I say the word diet, I mean diet and the dictionary definitely yeah, right. like, like how you live your life, you know, what, what you eat, how you live, not a diet of restriction. Yeah. Right. Cause I don't so, do well with that. No. And I love that approach that you really embrace, you know, eating well and cooking and it's not about, depriving yourself. It's about, um, just making better choices, I guess, and and cooking yourself. Yeah. I, I know there, I get people balk at this, like, Oh, Tanya, I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to get a lot of sleep. I don't have time to cook. You're crazy. Um, and my response is 
you don't have time for your life. Mm-hmm. Right. This is, this is you. This is my only time as Tanya this lifetime, right? I, I, there is no bigger priority than how I feel. And, um, and that's my response to people like, well, you got to get over it. You're going to have to cook. Maybe you're going to have to allocate 25 minutes an evening to cooking. Maybe you're going to have to allocate an hour on Sundays to doing some prep. Maybe you're going to have to take time out of your busy schedule and, and lock yourself in the bathroom and just meditate for 12 minutes. And because basically if we're not moving, if we're not doing these things, we're dying and that's not really a fun alternative. So the program, the ageless pathway for sustainable vitality is simple. It's you drop the three inflammatory, um, foods from your diet. You embrace some simple cooking. You feed yourself uh, nourishing food. You don't go, you don't calorie count. You don't give up fat. You don't give up carbs. You just eat real, wholesome, delicious food. And then I do highly recommend certain targeted support from supplements, from vitamin and mineral supplements, Mm -hmm. um, so that you can sleep better, so that you have better digestion. Most of us do need to rebuild the beneficial bacteria in our gut. And um, in addition to that, I recommend meditating. Uh, I recommend moving more. If you can't, if you can't afford going to a fitness class or you can't get outside, I have on my site like free workout videos. Just or you can find them on YouTube. You know, we I try to make it as easy as possible and as simple to follow because this is a lifestyle for the rest of your life. It's mm-hmm. this isn't um, the master cleanse or some crazy detox, you know, where you're just having bone broth every day for six weeks every year. This is, this is eating every day, sleeping every day really well and living for optimal vitality. Mm, Love it. And you're going to give us our free giveaway this week is, um, something that's going to be related to this that may maybe digs a little deeper and sort of helps people think through some of the, um, components of your program. So that'll be exciting. And we'll put that in the show notes at the end of the show. Um, I want to ask you, Tanya, um, what, uh, what, what is, you said you recently published a book. Is that about this program or are you just a writer in general? Like you write all kinds of things. I am a writer in general. I contribute to some sites. I've written scripts. I have the book Ageless Diet, which is kind of the master plan um, to optimal health and agelessness. Your, uh, your, you know, um, Matt, your instruction manual to your own fountain of youth that I published in late 2015. And I'm working on a new book about depression and inflammation and how Depression is infectious, but not contagious. Um, I'm just realizing that a lot of people, including myself, have struggled with anxiety or um, sadness or depression or just a general ennui, you know, a malaise, um, and that it could very possibly be related to this chronic inflammation I was talking about. Mm. Okay, cool. And that's not out yet, right? No, that'll be out later um, this year. Okay. And do you mostly, I know you said you live in Colorado. Where do you, where in Colorado are you? I'm in Denver. Oh, okay, cool. And do you um, run your program mostly online? Is this a, is this an online deal or do you do it in person Mm -hmm. as well? It lives online. Okay. So people can go to your program. Uh, we'll share the link in the show notes. And um, Tanya, I want to move into a segment um, called Superpowers for Success. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Being a well woman includes being financially healthy. Our sponsors, Lorraine L. and Kate Stalter of Better Money Decisions, are on a mission to eliminate complexity and confusion from your financial life. They replace Wall Street jargon with straightforward talk you can understand. And they create investment and retirement plans customized for your needs and your future. Download a free copy of their latest book, Don't Let Your Money Kick the Bucket Before You Do, and learn how to avoid the biggest mistakes women make when planning for retirement. Go to bettermoneydecisions.com slash wellwoman and download your free book today. 
this is um, the segment that we end the show with. And I ask all my guests these questions. And the first question is, what does success in life mean for you? <laughs> if you had asked me um, 18 years ago, I would have said fame, fortune, and uh, eternal youth. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe a famous hot husband. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> success really means that I that I have a purpose and that I work on that every day. That I feel engaged in my life. I would feel successful if I felt engaged in my life every day. Mm, love it. Okay. And um, when did you know that you were really good at what you do? Hmm. Um, about, about two years ago, <laughs> what happened? It just dawned on me. I could answer people who just come to me and I could, I could, I had so inculcated this knowledge and had such a level of expertise that I wasn't even aware of having to kind of gr- grapple for, um, answers to questions. I just had it all in me and I, and I felt comfortable, um, writing about things and I felt an ease in that. I think it was about two years ago. I realized, Oh, this feels easeful. It's not, not work, but it, the ease I think lets you know that you have become a master or a mistress of your subject. Yeah. It's when you're in flow, isn't it? That you just think, right. this isn't, I'm not pushing anymore. I'm not, I'm not like struggling and pushing this anymore. It, it's just coming. And, and it's this knowing that you have of something. Yeah, totally. It's a, uh, it, that's 100% it. You're still working. I mean, you yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. What superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? Wow. That's a great question. That's really good. Um, what superpower did I discover? discover I had? Uh-huh. Um, well I can fly. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, I have, um, like a super power, high power supervision of clear. I can see with clarity. I mean, and I mean that in a figurative and literal sense. Um, and now I realize I've always been able to see things beyond their, what they actually are. Cool. Um, and what advice would you give your younger self like 10 or 15 years ago? Um, relax. It's all, you're great. Where you are right now is perfect. You don't have to be anywhere else than where you are right now. Oh, I love that. Um, do you identify as a feminist? Absolutely. And what does that mean for you? Well, to me, it means that women are treated. There's equity and parity on all levels for women. Yeah. And men. Yeah. Um, Tanya, last question. What are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? What am I? I'm rereading Anne Lamott's Bird by Bird, which is a great writer's manual. It's, and it's a fun read. I'm also reading Elena Ferrante's uh, The Neapolitan Volumes. Have you read them? No. They're beautiful. She's such a it made me scrap the first 28 pages of my new book and start over because she writes with such truth. Mm. They're just wonderfully chewy books. Um, I know she's just this international sensation, um, and writes under this nom de plume, Elena Ferrante, but there were these great stories of this, uh, these girls growing up in Naples in the fifties and sixties. Oh, wow. I'll definitely have to check that out. I love these book recommendations from our guests and we'll link to them in the show notes. Um, Tanya, it's been such a pleasure talking with you today. I want to thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time and talking with me.
That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your well woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.